next um, basically data dissemination related topic. Um, so this is uh, Caitlin, um, oh boy, here we go. Uh, Macheski and Jesse Reynolds will be speaking about their clinical trials dashboard out of Yale. Don't panic if the first, I think it's about 15 seconds of this are really quiet. Also don't turn up your headphones a lot. Um, after just a few seconds, the volume just back up to where um, I was expecting it to be. So um, welcome and um, hey, our med folk, um, can you push the button? Hi, my name is Caitlin Macheski and I'm a biostatistician at the Yale Center for Analytical Sciences. My name is Jesse Reynolds and I'm also a biostatistician at the Yale Center for Analytical Sciences. And I'm also the director of the Yale clinicaltrials.gov team at Yale University. YCAS houses the clinicaltrials.gov team at Yale University, which is the centralized office for clinicaltrials.gov for, er, for the institution. I created the clinical trials dashboard with Shiny to help our office track registration and results. The Food and Drug Administration Amendments Act, or FDA, uh, in 2007 is a law that requires certain clinical trials to report results. It came into force for all trials that were due after January 2018 under the final rule. Since 2021, the FDA and the NIH have increased citations and notifications for institutions and not with non-compliance for required results reporting on clinicaltrials.gov. Many studies still do not submit results to clinicaltrials.gov. Some do not publish results after three years following study completion. Institutions are limited by a system which provides useful data, but additional steps are required to effectively track and monitor ongoing activity or plan for future actions. The data that administrators can download from the Protocol Registration and Results System, or PRS, is not simple to utilize for tracking. Some institutions develop their own programs and procedures that may not be reproducible elsewhere. Transparency groups such as the FDA Trials Tracker summarize compliance with mandated reporting to motivate academic institutions and other companies to improve compliance. Private companies like TrialAssure have developed software to monitor compliance, but this comes with a cost. To date, there are a lack of low-cost solutions to help institutions remain compliant. The Clinical Trials Dashboard aims to increase compliance by making tracking, registration, and results simple, transparent, and reproducible. And a demo version of the app can be found by following the QR code. So the dashboard was created because the CT, uh, the PRS provides information, but it can be overwhelming, um, as we stated earlier. And answering simple questions like, how do I determine the activity in my institution's PRS? Or how do I plan for and communicate with study teams about future required actions? Or where can I get all the information needed to do administrative tasks like mail merges? Or how can I determine how many NIH studies are in the system? For example, when will results be due? So the dashboard can answer those questions. And some of the things that it does is it provides a prospective three month data set download. And what you can do with this is you can find studies that have required annual updates that are due. You can find studies that are uh, due for results, whether it be for their primary results reporting or all study results reporting. And in this uh, prospective uh, download, you can also find which ones are applicable clinical trials or ACTs and which ones are NIH defined clinical trials. The data elements in this prospective data set uh, can be used for mail merges, and it has all the required fields uh, that are uh, needed in the download. The data set of review actions allows us to capture all CTGov team record approvals at our institution. It allows us to determine how many studies were registered in a time period by looking at the initial release date, and it also allows us to determine how many study results were submitted through the initial results release date. We can track the successful submission of records. So for example, with registrations, we can see how many were accepted and made public with two or, few, uh, two or fewer tries, which is called the first try. Graphic displays can be, uh, uh, that are included in the report will have line graphs that show trends of various metrics. For example, with registration, you can see uh, what's the average number of days to register a study? What's the average number of submissions before a study is approved? What percent of, uh, of uh, records were submitted and, and accepted on the first try within two tries, and what are the average days to publish this publicly from on the CTGov side. 
dashboard can also be used to track successful submission of records with respect to results. And this would be the same accepted and made public with two or fewer tries, or as we call it, first try. The graphic displays that can be included in reports with metrics uh, of line graphs for results that will tell you uh, what is the average number of days to publish results publicly, what's the average number of submissions before the results record is approved by clinicaltrials.gov, what's the percent success on first try, so um, out of all the ones that you submit, how, what percentage are successful on the first try, and how many, uh, and what's the average amount of days to publish your results on clinicaltrials.gov. So in addition to doing those things, uh, all of these graphic displays can be customized. So for example, the graphic displays can be customized into subgroups and you can select different options. For example, study type or study phase, the intervention type, whether or not it's an applicable clinical, where well, you're looking at applicable clinical trials or whether or not you're looking at NIH defined clinical trials. All of the toggles that are uh, available can be used in different combinations. So for example, you can look at only NIH interventional studies with behavioral interventions. And in addition to be able, being able to create subgroups and different combinations, you can also display your data in a custom date range. You could look at over a one-year period or a five-year period. And within that, you can break these down into monthly or quarterly or uh, uh, semi-annually, so one or three or six-month timeframes. Okay, wait, let me go back to that. And then I'll just say, and now for a demo. And now I will go through a demo of the interactive dashboard. I will now go through a brief demonstration of the clinical trials reporting dashboard. On the landing page, the user uploads the record information CSV file and the review history CSV file which can be downloaded from the clinicaltrials.gov PRS system. The tour goes through the different widgets available. This includes the date range of data to display, the date aggregation, and different filters for the data. The downloadable reports include a PDF report, including the tabular view of the registration and results plots, and information about prospective results or updates in the next three months. Users can also download a CSV version of the prospective data set, which includes information about the central contact and record owner, which can be used to create a mail merge. The plots included for registration include average number of days to publish registration, average numbers of tries to publish the registration, percent success within two tries, and average clinicaltrials.gov response time. These are also available in tabular view. There are similar plots available for results, including average numbers of days to publish results, average numbers of tries to publish results, percent success within two tries, average clinicaltrial.gov response time, and number of results published within 12 months from the end of study and days published past the primary completion date. The plots can be interacted with, including hovering over the data points for more information. And the plots automatically update if a user changes the date range of the data to display or the date aggregation or other filters which are available. This is an example of the downloadable report, which shows the tabular view of the registration report and results report, and a prospective report including expected updates and results in the next quarter. This also has a flag for NIH-defined clinical trials. This is what the CSV version looks like, which can be used to create mail merges to email those people who need to be alerted that updates are due. Thank you very much for attending our lightning talk about the clinicaltrials.gov reporting dashboard, and please reach out if you have any questions. Outstanding. Uh, I think we have time for a couple of questions. If uh, people would like to throw them into the chat, I know there's been 
uh, things going back and forth. Is there anything left? Or with both of the speakers here, is there anything else you'd like to add in, in uh, two minutes or less? I'm just curious about their experience with how difficult it is. Even well-meaning investigators often have trouble meeting the requirements. Do they see multiple tries and failures? So, uh, hi, uh, Jesse Reynolds. Um, so in, in my capacity, uh, what, I, what I've found that is that, yeah, people do struggle with trying to maintain compliance, but Yale has had a centralized office for this for more than 10 years. And so we have all sorts of levels of support for uh, researchers, whether it be determining whether or not the study has to be registered at the IRB level to the supportive process of maintaining the record throughout the study, as well as uh, like myself, I'm a biostatistician. Um, I'm tasked with helping people, you know, analyze the results, enter the results. The analysis for results actually is more for like terminated studies, you know, studies that don't sort of meet their their endpoints but um but yeah so we we provide support for all of that but yes we do we find that people struggle it's also a system that's difficult to use because people only go into it you know maybe once or twice a year um so one of the reasons why we created the dashboard was to be able to sort of understand the institution activity as a whole to be able to report back to you know our superiors but to also be able to reach out to people individually and say hey you have this due or hey you have this error or or anything like that absolutely it's impressive how challenging it is for relatively smart people to who really want to comply to to comply there, 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 yeah, no, we, we hear that all the time. Um, and with, you know, with the NIH now increasing requirements now, and now with, you know, data sharing plans, data management plans, uh, and then also sort of, um, you know, all the other things that are sort of attached the VA requires registration, PCORI requires registration, all of these federal entities are requiring all these things outside of what the FDA was already requiring. So, and then if you want to publish, you have to register your study. And so it's, it's, yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. And, uh, you know, we, we, we were working on it all the time. Yeah. It's an amazing tool. I've already emailed the link to several people at Michigan. Thank you.